Listen, I know I did like your dad and disappeared, but unlike your dad, I'm back and I want to talk about ARM. Drop an early like if you don't mind, I want a bigger ego than Kanye. This video is sponsored by no one. No one is sponsoring me. Look at those arms. I apologize, I didn't mean to turn you on this early in the video. ARM stands for Advanced Risk Machines. It's an acronym inside of an acronym. RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computing. I don't want to go through the entire history and stuff, so I'll be brief. The first ARM chip, known as ARM1, was made in 1985 by a couple of chads at Acorn Computers, Sophie Wilson and Steve Ferber in England. And when they went to turn it on, surprise surprise, it worked. Then they realized that it wasn't turned on, but it was still running. It turns out that it was running on power from a voltage leak. Yes, ARM is very efficient. Uh, it had uh, a power supply and some links through which you could measure the power used by the processor. So after we had the champagne, Steve approached the test board and put the meter across the links that would allow him to measure the processor power and discovered it was using no power whatsoever. No measurable power has been used by the processor. So some frantic evaluation of where the thing uh, was going later, we discovered that the processor was in a board which was faulty. There was no power being supplied at all. There were errors in the board layout. And the processor was actually running off the protection diodes. So inputs to the processor um, from other chips um, it, when they're high in CMOS, there are diodes to the power supply line to stop the high level becoming any higher than the power supply line and breaking the transistors. So those protection diodes were giving the processor enough power to execute instructions perfectly well at speed. Um, so later on, he did get to measure it, and the processor was very happily using far less power, about 500 milliwatts, than he designed it for. So that was a success, and we didn't worry about power ever again, not for the next seven or eight years. Look at the M chips in Apple laptops. When running at full tilt, there isn't really that much difference when it comes to battery life between ARM and x86. However, during normal use, Apple's chips just dominate when it comes to efficiency. ARM is simply superior to x86 in that regard, and laptops need efficiency. My ASUS VivoBook Pro has a Ryzen 5600H and an RTX 2050. <laughs> So it's not exactly a battery sucking monster, however, it'll still only get between 4 and 6 hours just simply word processing. All this on power saving mode and the screen set to 60Hz instead of 144Hz. Open DaVinci Resolve and oh boy, I'm tired boss. It'll last even less than an hour and that doesn't even include trying to render out a video. It doesn't help that ASUS thought a 52 watt hour battery was a good idea for a pro laptop like this. Huh? Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention why ARM is so efficient. Why? Why? Like I explained in the acronym, ARM is a RISC architecture, reduced instruction set computing. Meaning that the instruction set that ARM follows is simpler than x86, which is CISC, complex instruction set computing. ARM executes an instruction once every clock cycle, whereas x86 can take multiple clock cycles to execute one instruction. This is because x86 can execute multiple operations in a single instruction, sometimes leading to higher performance in specific applications, but this also leads to higher power consumption. To simplify even further, ARM has a simpler architecture, meaning it has less transistors per instruction, which means less power draw and more efficiency. This is why Apple's decision was actually genius and why it still has them being the battery life king despite Qualcomm making its entrance with the Snapdragon X chips. And on top of all that, the M chips are still more powerful in real world performance. The only higher performing chip hails from AMD in the form of Strix Halo or as it's also known by its government name as the Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 or whatever it's called. It's a powerful APU with unified memory, but there's still one major problem. It has to be plugged in in order to maintain that higher performance. From multiple reports, the ASUS ROG Flow Z13, which features the AMD chip, has a battery life during productivity of about 3-4 to four hours, while the MacBook Pro 14 with the M4 chip has somewhere above 10 hours, productivity being video editing and the like. The battery capacity on both devices are almost identical, with 70 watt hours for the ASUS and 72.4 watt hours for the MacBook Pro.
Mr. Hammond, I think we're back in business. You may not have realized this, but x86 is currently on a death spiral. Amazon and Oracle are currently making a shift towards using ARM for their servers. Even though servers don't run on batteries, they still use electricity, and everybody loves saving money. I agree with Jeff Bezos not allowing his delivery drivers to pee or poo because it saves money. One current and two former Amazon drivers now suing the retail giant, claiming they're forced to urinate in water bottles in order to keep up with the delivery schedule that the company sets. The lawsuit claims drivers aren't allowed even time to go to the bathroom due to the rigid work pace. They say they have to deliver two to 300 packages a day while the company uses high tech gear to keep tabs on the drivers, things like GPS and in truck cameras. You don't need normal bodily functions when working for Amazon. Amazon has a one-day delivery for your poo from your colon directly to your neighbor's door. The shift in choice of architecture in the industry will probably hit Intel harder than AMD. Where did you get that fact? Well, I pulled it out of my ass. And also this video I made about Intel. Good news for us consumers is that ARM is becoming more and more popular thanks to Apple of all companies. Qualcomm's second gen Snapdragon X chips are currently in development. Maybe it will actually deliver on what Qualcomm was promising for the first gen. And hopefully it's available on many more devices. If I get my hands on one of those laptops, you already know I'm removing Windows and replacing it with Linux. What I'd also like to see is ARM become more commercially available on the desktop. Kinda like what you can get with the Mac Studio. Imagine going down to your local insert computer place here and buying an ARM chip just like you would do with Intel and AMD. And while ARM increases in popularity, there's another player joining the server. Risk 5. In the simplest way, think of it like ARM, but open source. But that's a topic for another time. That's the end of this video. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. There you go. Instead of trying to push towards the pad, pull this way. Mm. Pull towards your. Oh! Are you kidding? What? You can't be serious. What the? F